Hey, man, you already know. She big homie, OG Palais, man. I'm right here with Dirty Glove Bastards. You understand me? Big old facts. Baking soda, gas stove. Yeah. One pot, two pots. All right, Parlay. Welcome to DGB, man. How you doing today, bro? I'm doing great, man. I'm glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. I'm excited about this. And uh, you're an OG in the Atlantic music scene, uh, member of the Dem Franchise Boys. Uh -huh. um, let me start off by asking you, what are your thoughts on the current uh, music scene here in Atlanta right now? I love it. Yeah. I love it. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Music is like painting. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing perfect. You know, this painter got the way he paints some, this painter got the way he paints some. Both of them might be popular. Yeah. You know, a lot of people ain't don't like the uh, the less lyrical people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and the less musical people and people who really don't have no respect for the OGs. But, hey, man, it's a new generation. It's an internet generation. Yeah. And you got to be able to adapt to the, the times and the situation. So I fuck with it. And one of the reasons being because, she we the hook. Yeah. Atlanta, we running shit right now. Now, if we weren't running shit, I might feel some type of way. I ain't gonna lie. If it was another shit, I might be like, oh man, but you know, shit, I'm fucking with it, man. My, we, we black Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, do you think the newer artists are uh, putting on for the city the right way? They doing it the way they think they're supposed to do it. Yeah. Without guidance, you, without somebody telling you what to do, if something you ain't never did before, mm -hmm. you ain't gonna know how to do it. But I like how they represent. I like thug rapping, a little baby rapping. You know what I'm saying? These niggas repping the streets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They come from the street side. So it give everybody who not really from Atlanta and really seen no street artists a, a kind of insight on, you know, what's going on, yeah. where we really from. Yeah. The real Atlanta. Not where they talking about the punks and all this shit, because I don't see punks where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's, you know, it's a nigga from the hood. Every project got a, a sister from the hood. So mm -hmm. besides him, I don't see punks. I don't see what everybody see when they talk about Atlanta. Yeah. I only know this street shit and this gangster shit. I only know that you don't want to go on this side of town. Oh, Charlotte just got killed over here. Oh, R.I.P. homie. Oh, I know him. That's all I know. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So, shit, I like to see them rep for Atlanta, the real Atlanta. I call this shit the real Atlanta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like the OGs here in Atlanta are giving the proper guidance to uh, the younger artists coming up? Well, shit, real nigga shit. The only nigga I feel like really... You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the OGs, it's a lot of niggas who've been doing their thing, mm -hmm. who speak on righteous shit, but the only OG in the city who really speak on shit like that is Big Bank. You yeah. know what I'm saying? My homie. Besides him, niggas ain't really speaking that righteous shit. Everything else is set from a selfish standpoint. Yeah, I got you. All right, so uh, let's dive in through uh, some of your history here in Atlanta. Um, as I mentioned, you're part of the Dem Franchise Boys. Yeah. And you guys signed with Universal back in 2004. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like for you? Um, what were you, about 21? 20, 20, 20, yeah. shit, start rapping, six months later, half a million, <laughs> shit, I could have half a name the shit really fell in my lap, you know yeah. what I'm saying, I never really wanted to be no rapper, no. you know what I'm saying, I never really tried to be a rapper, uh, all this shit started because in high school, in 11th grade, we had, no, in 10th grade, I was in 10th grade, Doug, we had a language arts festival, and if you participate in it, then you don't got to go to four period. <laughs> So what I did is I wrote like a little uh, a rap song. Yeah. It was a hook and it was a verse. So I rapped it so I won't have to go to fourth period. Mm -hmm. And I performed it for the school and the whole school went crazy. You know what I'm saying? So you know, uh, the following year, I played basketball uh, for Doug. And my group member, Pimpin, the one who make all the beats, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He was trying to get me to rap. You know what I'm saying? After Tim got the hearing that, he like, come to the studio, come to the studio, but I really wasn't in it. I was, I was counting, I was getting real heavy in the street then. Yeah. So we used to play basketball, and before the games, he'll beat on the locker, and I'll rap the verse. And all the teammates be singing the ad lib. This shit was like Sunset Park. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's what kind of kind of got me enrolling into it. So um, 12th grade year, uh, Pimpin, um, he went to another school. Um, I graduated, Doug. I went to college. Mm -hmm. um, what college so, did you go to? Barbara Scotia. Okay. It's a black college in uh, Concord, right outside uh, Charlotte. Right outside Charlotte. Okay. So um, I went up there, and um, my first my first week on day on the campus, you know, after you do um, what you call it when orientation. orientation, when you do the orientation, we did that. I'm walking back to my dorm room. So now at this point, every time I hear music or a beat, I start rapping this verse. You see what I'm saying? Because back then it wasn't instrumentals, yeah. unless it was somebody else's instrumental. So every time I would hear it, I rap my verse. So I'm walking down the sidewalk. I hear this beat playing, start rapping it. I'm like, hell yeah. So I follow the sound all the way into the dorm room. Mm -hmm. When I walk in the dorm room, guess who I see? Mm -hmm. Pimpin'. Mm -hmm. 
And I hadn't seen him in a whole year. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? He's like, what you doing at school? I'm like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in college, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And uh, right then and there, man, we recorded it. I recorded it then. He told me to write two more verses. Yeah. I wrote two more verses. I started performing it, a um, song called Money. Mm -hmm. um, I started performing it at all the colleges, Johnson C. Smith, mm -hmm. um, 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 all the colleges up there, and it was real big. Yeah. So I came home, performing at Pool Palace. That's when the Pool Palace was just, yeah. we tried to kind of get started, performing at Pool Palace. Um, so uh, I went back, I did two semesters. I went back my sophomore semester, my first semester of sophomore year. Mm -hmm. and, um, but Pimpin didn't go, he stayed here. Okay. So when I, went, when I came back, the song was like fucking popping in the club. Like it's the hottest shit in the club. So like the first song I ever did was like a street fucking underground hit. You see what I'm saying? So then I started performing that song. Yeah. In, in, in Atlanta, going to all the little clubs around yeah. here, chit chat. Um, um, you want LaCour back then, but I'm just saying LaCour because that's the South Side hood spot. You know what I'm saying? And I would do White T first, yeah. and I would perform Money second. Mm -hmm. And then and then White T got started getting real big. Yeah. And how we got our deal is Coco brother was at West Fulton Middle School on Bankhead, mm -hmm. and he took his throwback off and he had a white T-shirt on, mm -hmm. and all the kids in the gym start running around screaming, "Yup, in my white T." <laughs> So Coco called my homie Moot B and asked him, Moot B's like the Bankhead ambassador. You know, yeah. anything on Bankhead you call Moot B, he can get in contact with or he know it. And he called us and shit, it went from there, man. Like I say, six months later, we had a deal. Yeah. Did you mm -hmm. ever think it would take off that quickly for you? I didn't even really, I was just doing this shit for, I really was just doing it because I liked to do it then. Yeah. I, I never really thought about being a rapper. Mm -hmm. It kind of just happened so fast and you know, I always been the type of person who who embraced the limelight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I always been I've never been shy. So I, I embraced the role and the shit happened so fast then I really didn't have a chance to really understand what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, and let's talk about White Sea, because that song really blew up here in the South and uh it ended up getting remixed by a lot of different artists, uh, uh -huh. most notably by a Gucci man on Black T. Uh -huh. How did you feel about all the remixes? Um uh, well, you know, all of them were good, you know, as far as the, the shit that happened with the black tea, you know, really, um, it was really like some, it really, f some shit was finna go down hmm. about, about that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, DJ Ace had uh, hooked up with DJ Ace, you know, and Gucci used to fuck with DJ Ace. And I was like, what's going on with this dude? Put me in, put me in line with this dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was really telling Ace to do it from a cool spot. And by, by my head, I had bullshit in my head. You see what I'm saying? But then we, I talked to Gucci, you know what I'm saying? We met, we talked, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it, wasn't, it really wasn't in after then. We seen that, you know, it was, it was mutual. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, you know, ever since then, man, um, it been cool. Then, you know, the White Tea remake with JD, it what led us to getting hooked up with JD mm -hmm. for Oh I Think They Like Me. Yeah. And that's how we end up getting to deal with JD yeah. for Oh I Think They Like Me from the White T yeah. remix. Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's talk about that because uh, you mentioned you signed with uh, Jermaine Dupri and So So Def in 2005. Mm -hmm. At the time, how excited were you to sign in? Because, you know, he was a land legend at that, at that time, too. Oh, shit, man. Um, it was a privilege, but I felt like it was a privilege both ways. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Because you, it, it, you got to figure at the time we was the streets. Mm -hmm. Um, you got to figure at the time, um, everything was mainstream. Yeah, because he was really working with us at yeah. the time. And, and, but before Franchise Boys came out, there was no underground artist. Yeah. I mean, I might say no, it wasn't no underground artist, but it wasn't no underground artist with, major, with radio play. Yeah. Only way you got radio plays is when you signed to a major label. Yeah. We was the first group to get major radio play without even being signed to a label. Mm. We wasn't even signed to a label. We didn't even have a label of our own self. We were just so popping in the street that the shit just went to the radio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely moved really quick for you guys on that. And uh, then you guys came back with uh, Lean With It, which hit number one on the Billboard rap charts. Yeah. What was it like? How did it feel to hit number one? Well, with Lean With It, Rock With It, yeah. story behind that, the rest of my group members weren't even known Lean With It, Rock With It. Hmm. Did um, you produce that record? Yeah, I produced it. Um, and at the time, um, it was like the pool bay was a big old movement. So I had artists at the time, uh, Ben Hill Squad, uh, Charlie, uh, Nut, who on the song, Charlie, who on the song, and my homie, uh, Shawty Black from Trap Squad. Now, like, there was a hot little group back then, too. Yeah. So what I did is I was like, I'm going to take my artists and some of the hot artists, and I'm going to put them all together, and we're going to do a song for the hood. Mm -hmm. And I called my homie Buck, and I said, I'm going to collab with him uh, on, the, on the beat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we called, went to the projects out there um, on the east side, on Counter Road, went in the studio, put that shit down, took that shit to the club the same fucking night. Hmm. 
hit that same fucking night, two weeks later, shit on the radio. So Lean with a Rock with it was already on the radio, playing in Atlanta before they was even on it. Cause I had really went solo. And I was like, I really ain't into the group thing because the type of person that I am, I can't really make the type of music that I really want to make because it don't resemble you know, everybody in the crew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I started doing my own thing. And then that's when we got to deal with JD with the art thing. They liked me. And he was like, we need another single. So at the time, the little group, um, Ben Hill Squad, you know, I don't do, I ain't do paperwork. I'm just fuck with you. If you can stay down now through the grind without no paperwork, I know it's gonna be right when the paperwork came, mm -hmm. but you know how it be when people be in these artists' ear. So they kind of got the big head. So it was easy for me to just say, "Okay, I'm gonna take y'all two off." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I took Shout It Shout It Black off because he was just I needed another space for my other group member, yeah. and it just made sense. Charlie and Peanut was still with us. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I put them on it. Shit, we dropped that shit nationwide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you uh, surprised at all that it hit number one? Like when you recorded, did you know it was gonna be a yeah. big hit? Yeah. Back then, uh, it's crazy to say this because you never know what's going to be a hit. Yeah. But back then, we recorded songs mm -hmm. with our minds saying they're hits. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And that mentality made the whole world adapt to Bankhead sound. Yeah. I'm not even going to say Atlanta sound. I'm going to say Bankhead sound, mm -hmm. Westside sound, because we were the only person who even had that sound. Yeah. People weren't even on Fruity Loops before they even heard about us being on Fruity Loops. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, we kind of opened up this whole fucking wave for the whole generation. Like, yeah. Franchise boys did. We opened up this door for the generation. We made and we made these labels start hiring black A and R's because they didn't want to come to the project to find groups. Hmm. So they start hiring these black A and R's, and that's how a lot of these people started getting jobs. And this will open these doors up. They would make people want to find these these street artists and make them big. And we opened the door for that shit. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Facts. Do you feel like you get the credit for that? Fuck no. Look at all the shit franchise done did, and all the shit we done did for the streets and for the culture. We don't even fucking get five percent of the credit. Like T.I. got the, the trap museum. We ain't in the trap museum. How the fuck white T ain't in the trap museum? I bang in my white T. I slang in my white T. Come on now. You see what I'm saying? I, I really feel like, you know, hey, man, you know, it, it should be what it be, man. But yeah. shit and proof in the pudding. Mm -hmm. You can't erase history. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You can't erase history. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you guys end up collabing with uh, the band Corn too, for a remix of uh, Lean Wood. Wood and Rock with what was that like, and were you familiar at all with their music? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Because they was our label mates, both of us signed a okay. virgin. Yeah, yeah. And um, I used to stay, um, I used to stay in Tennessee. Um, I moved from, um, when we moved to Born Home, my dad stayed in Tennessee. Okay. So, you know, I used to get, in, get into a lot and, um, when I was young. So my mom, my dad wanted me to come stay with him. So my mom sent me to stay with my dad. Mm -hmm. So when I stayed up with them, it was kind of like 35% black, 65% yeah. white. But the blacks lean more toward the white side. So I learned country music, bluegrass, yeah. rock and roll, and I learned a lot of stuff about that. So I knew who Corn was already. Okay. So to go in the studio and to collab with them, like that was like that was my first like like star starstruck yeah. moment, like niggas fucking corn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that was huge. Yeah. The song was the song was the song was big too. The shit was big. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that song went platinum also. Yeah. The remix yeah. went platinum also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you surprised at all that they were putting that collab together when you first heard about it? Yeah. 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 That, I mean, because anyone saw that one coming. Shit, hell no. It's no way you can see it. Because even to the day, you really don't still get rock and roll bands who does stuff with, with yeah. rap artists. Yeah. They, they're still rare right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh -huh. the one I really think of is uh, Jay-Z and Lincoln Park. Uh -huh. and that was after you guys. Yep. Put your whole wrist in the pot, put your fist in the pot, make it double up, nigga. Talk to him. Double up, double up, double up, double up, roll with a double cup in it. Big back wood stuff, crib rolled up, and you know we got double stuff in it.